Hi everyone, welcome back to Gluten-Free Habit. Today I'm going to show you how to make these gluten-free, cool and delicious ice cream sandwiches. Well, it's starting to heat up here in Southern California and nothing says summer better than an ice cream sandwich. I've pretty much avoided buying the gluten-free ice cream sandwiches at the store because they just cost so much. But with summer coming, I decided to make my own. And I'm glad I did because it's a delicious way to cool off. And if you want something to get the kids involved in, then this is perfect because these are so easy and so fun to make. The red, white, and blue sprinkles make these great to serve at your 4th of July get-together, but you can definitely use any kind of topping that you like to customize these to your own party theme, or you can do no topping at all. I'm personally making a big batch of these to have in the freezer for a cool treat all summer long. If you like ice cream sandwiches, I hope you'll give these a try. The full recipe can be found down below the video in the description box, and as always, make sure your ingredients are gluten-free. Okay, here's what you'll need brown rice flour, white rice flour, special dark cocoa powder, baking powder, salt, xanthan gum, butter, granulated sugar, some egg yolks, vanilla, hot water, your favorite ice cream flavor, and if you want to dip the edges of your ice cream sandwiches, you'll need your favorite topping like sprinkles, chopped nuts, mini chocolate chips, mini M&Ms, or anything else that you like. You'll also need a cookie sheet or a jelly roll pan, an 8x8 baking dish, some tin foil, and some parchment paper. Okay, let's get some things ready. This first step has to be done at least a few hours before all other steps because we'll be freezing the ice cream. Set out your 8x8 baking dish and line it with tin foil. You'll be filling this with softened ice cream so that we can make a nice frozen square, which can easily be cut into equal size rectangles. Leave a little bit of tin foil hanging out over the edges so that you can use that to lift it out when the ice cream is frozen. Spray it lightly with non-stick cooking spray. Now fill it with as much ice cream as you'd like. You may want a little bit of ice cream, you may want lots of ice cream, totally up to you. And the more you put, the taller your ice cream sandwiches will be. Just as a reference, I used an entire 1.5 quart container. With a spoon, you can press down the ice cream to get rid of any air pockets. One of the fun things about ice cream sandwiches is that you can make them any size or shape that you want. The ones I'm showing you today are just slightly smaller than the ones that you'd see in the store, but you can also make them square or circular and those work really well too. Then when you're done pressing in the ice cream, you can smooth it out on top. So one of the keys to making these ice cream sandwiches is make sure that your ice cream is nice and solid before you assemble them. That way you can put them together before the ice cream gets too soft. I can't give you an exact time on how long that'll take. In my freezer, that means at least a few hours, but after a while, you can just press on the ice cream to check and see if it's solid. Now pop it in the freezer. Next, set out your butter to soften and line your baking sheet with parchment paper. Just like with the tin foil, allow a little bit of parchment to hang over the edge to help you lift it off the pan right when it comes out of the oven. You can just trim away any ragged edges. And lastly, to get ready, if you're going to be dipping your ice cream sandwiches, then fill a bowl with sprinkles or nuts or whatever you'll be using, and make sure that the bowl is wide enough to dip your sandwiches into. And later on, after your ice cream is all frozen and you're ready to get going on the recipe, you can preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to mix together our dry ingredients. In a medium-sized mixing bowl, mix together your brown rice flour, white rice flour, cocoa powder, 
salt, baking powder, and xanthan gum. Whisk that all together really well. I'm using special dark cocoa powder with these because it's partly Dutch processed cocoa, which gives the cake a nice dark color, which is perfect for the ice cream sandwiches, and it's less bitter than the regular cocoa powder, which gives these a much nicer flavor. Set that aside when you're done mixing it together. Now in a large mixing bowl, we'll mix together the butter and the sugar until it's creamy. Add in the egg yolks and the vanilla and mix until it's well blended. Now carefully add in all of your dry mix. Start mixing on low speed and then as you blend in the butter and it gets moister, then you can increase to medium. Another important part in making ice cream sandwiches is that the cake has to maintain a slightly chewy and soft texture even when it's frozen. For example, you can't just freeze a cookie because it would be much too hard when it's frozen. I think these ice cream sandwiches have just the right texture that we need. They're almost like a thin brownie. At this point, you're gonna have a pretty thick paste of very dark chocolate, and that's exactly what it should look like. Now add in your hot water and mix the dough until it's smooth. Again, here I would start on low speed because the liquid will splatter, and then when you have it pretty well blended, you can turn the mixer up to medium. When it's nice and smooth, you'll have a very thick batter that will be a little bit sticky. Okay, it's time to spread the batter onto the baking sheet. Start by scooping mounds of batter all around your baking sheet. You can spread the dough with a rubber spatula or an offset spatula. I think an offset spatula works best for this, but whatever works best for you. The amount of cake that we need is an 8 by 16 rectangle but we want to make it just a tiny bit larger than that so that we can trim off any rough edges. So you'll see in my video that I'm going a little bit larger on each side and later you'll see me trim it away. As you're spreading the batter, try to make it as level as possible so that it cooks evenly. You can use the edge of the spatula to straighten up the sides. When you're done spreading the dough, you can put this in the oven at 375 degrees. When you take your cake out of the oven, you want to immediately remove it from the pan so that it stops baking. To do this, just lift it up carefully, keeping it as flat as possible to avoid cracking, and transfer it to a cutting board or a cookie sheet to start cooling. But just make sure that whatever you transfer it onto can fit into your freezer. So you can see here that it measures about 10 inches across, so that gives me plenty of room to trim it nice and neat. So I'll do that right now as it's cooling on the counter. Using a sharp knife, I'll just gently trim away any extra. And after they're assembled and frozen, they even absorb a little bit of the moisture from the ice cream as well. Mm -hmm. 
So after your cake has cooled for about 15 minutes on the counter, transfer the cutting board and the cake and the parchment, the whole thing, into the freezer. When the cake is fully cold throughout, you can take it out of the freezer. To cut the cake, what you need to do is start by cutting it directly in half. You'll see in this video that I'm a little bit off center, so I didn't eyeball it very well. Shame on me. But try to go straight down the middle. And then you cut each of those sections in half. And then each of those parts will be cut in half again. So when I was first testing these, I assembled them when the cake was cold to the touch, but apparently it was still slightly warm on the inside and the ice cream melted and it made a big mess. So a word to the wise, just make sure that your cake is thoroughly cold. Then after you've done that, just turn your knife and do one slice straight down the middle. And then that should give you eight pairs of cake rectangles. All right, once you have those ready, you can get the ice cream out of the freezer and lift the tin foil out of your eight by eight pan. Sometimes it gets stuck from a little bit of melted ice cream, so you might have to get a spatula and kind of shove it under there to release the tin foil from the cold pan. Press down the tin foil around the edges just to make sure you won't be slicing into it. And then with a sharp knife, you want to cut this directly in half. And then each of those parts will get cut in half. And then turn your knife and do one slice right down the middle. That'll give you eight two inch by four inch ice cream rectangles. And now the most fun part of course is assembling them. So start by placing a piece of cake with the smoother side down because you want that nice smooth side on the outside. Then get an ice cream rectangle, set it right on top, and then put another piece of cake right on top of that. Then with a nice flat hand, just gently press on the ice cream sandwich to stick everything together. The ice cream should be pretty solid, but you can press it just enough to push the ice cream out to the edges of the cake. If it presses down too easily, that means that your ice cream is not frozen enough yet. Now you'll notice that as you're working, even though your ice cream was frozen, it's gonna melt very quickly. So what I recommend is have a baking dish or a pan or something in your freezer waiting for your finished ice cream sandwiches. And as you finish each one, put it directly into the freezer to make sure it stays perfect. If the ice cream gets a little messy on the sides, you can just smooth it out with a butter knife. And then there you go, ice cream sandwich. You can stop right here, or you can now dip it into the sprinkles and make it extra special. I actually prefer them with no sprinkles, but my kids love the sprinkles. So we're doing red, white, and blue today for the 4th of July. But there are really a million things you could dip these in other than sprinkles. You could do nuts, you could do mini chocolate chips, mini M&Ms. There's so many things you could do. So let your imagination run wild. And there you go, gluten-free ice cream sandwiches. In order to store these nicely, what I do is after I've completed making all the sandwiches and they're firmed up in the freezer, I like to individually wrap each one in a small piece of wax paper and then tape it shut with a piece of scotch tape. If you don't wanna do that, you could layer them with a piece of wax paper in between each sandwich and just stack them into an airtight plastic storage tub. That would be great too. But you don't really wanna just stack them up with nothing in between because then they're probably going to stick together. If you thought this video was helpful, please do me a favor and press the thumbs up button. And I always love hearing from you guys, so please feel free to say hi in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of the ice cream sandwiches. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next gluten-free habit recipe. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.